model 1868 U.S. Springfield rifle. This is a trapdoor rifle. It is a 57 caliber. After the Allen conversions, they started making uh, a couple different models, 1867, 1868 cadet rifle. This is the 1868 uh, infantry rifle or full-size rifle. I don't have enough books in the reference library yet to get a good thing. I'm using an old Flatelman's guide, which has very basic information. But that's how we identified this. And there's several features on this to help you identify this 1868 from the 1870 model, which is similar. First thing you're going to need with your trapdoors, because there's rifles, some versions have short rifles, some are cadet rifles, which have a shorter barrel. And some guns were surplus and cut down by dealers, which are no longer a collectible item. And this is important in determining the value of the gun. Okay? That's why you've got to kind of pay attention. And it's difficult. Because you have to pay attention to the details of the piece. And make sure your information is accurate and you understand what the hell is going on. Or you're going to get taken to the cleaners. First thing I think you need the tool with the trap door is a good tape measure. And as the book says, it should be 32 and a half inches the length of the barrel. So you go to the end of the muzzle and you come up to the point where the breech block is and it comes out 32 and a half inches. This is actually the point where when you open this up, the base of the cartridge would be flush with this solid part of the receiver. So this is the proper barrel length. Okay. Another thing that is confusing on the breech box, there is a date. The date does not necessarily correspond with the date the gun was made or the model. The state has 1870 on it. I thought this was an 1870 model. It is not. It is an 1868 model. Um, they will. And it says in Flatelman's, you can find them, and it's legit with a different date on there. Okay? So, you have to understand that. Now, on this gun here, I didn't pay a ton of cash for it, but it also has several problems. We're going to take a closer look. I'm going to try to get the camera to come in, and I'm going to compare this next to a model 1873 style gun and show you what basically the difference is, is in how this distinguishes this is an 1868. Look at the sight, look at the other things, and I'll point out the problems with this gun. This gun, I got it very reasonable, but this gun has some major problems. One in the chamber area, there's some loose fitting or worn parts here with the thumb thing, which I tried to correct. The breech block is a little loose. There's a little ding up here, we may have to recrown the barrel, and we're going to have to work on a little bit of damage in the chamber. Plus, the stock is cracked. Somebody pinned it, but didn't glue it. And there's damage where the gun was disassembled improperly, and we'll look at that. And we'll go over these points, and take, i got to get the camera and take a closer look at it, and uh, then I will make videos on how I repair each and every one of these little points. Okay, now we're going to take a close-up look at the breech. As you see the stampings, the eagle head and the 19, or 1870 mark. This has a long receiver section here, and I'll compare it to the other uh, 73 here in a minute. So the first distinguishing feature of the 68 model is this long section here and the fact that they were serial numbered on the receiver in the barrel where the 1870 model was not but I seen one up for auction that had serial numbers stamped on there now a lot of these guns were used by other organizations other than the military they were modified, stamped, and other things done to them that don't come under uh, federal use, say, the state militia use different. 
Now here it was damaged. You have to remove the action from the stock before you drive this hinge pin out. This hinge pin is with, you know, you drive this out with a punch. There's an extractor here, the breech block, and then this, when I get into disassembly, comes down and there's a like a little pin on the end and a hole here that lines this up. Somebody tried driving this out with the stock in and damaged the stock right in there. As you can see, the stock is cracked also. When the gun's all put together, the crack isn't that obvious, but it goes down to where the wrist was cracked off at one time. I knew this. I could see this in the pictures when I bought it. And there's a brass screw pin type thing to tie it down. But when you disassemble this gun, the idiots didn't glue it, so these cracks, the wood will move. So I'm going to try to repair this, and then because the extent of the cracks pretty much go through underneath the trigger guard here, I'm also going to pin internally this way, drive a pin up maybe to full length to help draw down. And uh, so this is going to be a separate video on that. Now this gun had a few other problems. The other problem is this breech is a little loose, has some play in it, I have to investigate it. This was loose, I tried tightening the spring up, but I have to do some work on this. And also, ah, I have to stop the video here for a minute. Alright, another problem which I'll try to take a look here. I don't know if we can see it. Somebody, whether deliberate or not, a lot of these guns were what they called demilled. Somebody, there's a ding or bash down in here where the rim sits, where they hit it and deformed the end of the chamber. So a round cannot be put in here. I tried it. It, it doesn't fit. This is going to have to be corrected. I don't know if it can be corrected like this or I have to pull the barrel off and try to re rework the chamber either by hand or try cleaning it up with a chamber reamer. And like I said, I got a little play in here which I have to investigate and research the gun more to figure out what it is. Okay, now we'll take a look at the receiver once again. Okay, now I have our model 1868 and this is a 1873. If you notice this, what I'm talking about short receiver is this section here. It's longer. An 1870 will have a shorter section, much like the 1873, where this longer section is the 1868 model. It's one of the dif distinguishing features. Also, a model 1870 will not have serial numbers on it. Like I said, I've seen some put on there because of uh, you know other units or other uses. Now on a 50 caliber rifle, as you can tell with the rear sights, it's a little bit simpler. I guess it's a 100 yard. I have to do more research. 100 and then 200 and 300 yards to flip up sight. Which... flips up like that. Okay. As compared to this is an 1873 Buckhorn sight with a uh, different uh, style. We'll get into that when we get into this model. But you see the sights, this is more simpler. And they started getting fancier with the sights as the models progressed. Also, on the old ones, the front sights, kind of a one-piece deal that's soldered on, where there's a base but that blade can be changed. There's a pin in there on the later 4570s and the height of this blade can be changed. Also, the old 5070s cleaning rods are different. I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to go into it. But you have just your front band and your rear band. And what was added on the 4570s, which I don't think you find on the 5070s, is they have stacking swivels on 4570s. It was added on there. 